I will prevail. Stay focused, as you wish. Let us away. <laughs> Battle. Put me in there. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. I will get the victory. Oh no. That's my cue. down so easily. I have held back.
have thorns.
will need all my strength. This was beneath me. down so easily. I have gratitude. Thank you. Ah, there you are. I apologize for calling you in so suddenly. Please, sit. There is a matter I would like to discuss with you. I believe I've told you this before, but it is my responsibility to aid the Archbishop in all her duties. Spiritual instruction, ceremony oversight, donation management, all of the Church's many administrators. I oversee not only the priesthood, but also the Knights of Seros and the Officers' Academy. The Archbishop entrusts a great deal to my discretion. Even when she must make decisions herself, she often seeks my counsel in advance. And yet, your appointment to a teaching position at the Officers' Academy was a complete surprise to me. Not only that, but you have also been entrusted with the Sword of the Creator. I was as surprised as anyone else to learn that. Frankly, I am just not sure how to handle you. 
I am the Archbishop's right hand, and yet when it comes to you, I have been told almost nothing. Not quite. I do find you to be a trustworthy individual, but my subjective opinion is not enough. I have a duty to be cautious. Should the Archbishop's trust in you prove to be misplaced, it is the faithful who will suffer most. First, I would like to know just how much you know about your... You are the child of Gerald Eisner, correct? That's quite a vague reply for such a basic question. In the future, I would advise you to answer such queries with confidence. As the former captain of the Knights of Seros, Geralt was renowned throughout Fodlan. If you really are his child, then no one would voice any complaint about you joining the Knights. How long has it been since you became a mercenary? Given your youth, that hardly seems likely. Come to think of it, I have never asked your age. Just how old are you? Your face says it all. You truly don't know, do you? Just what was Gerald thinking, raising you this way? Given your responses thus far, I feel as though any further questions would just be a waste of our time. However, permit me to make one thing clear. Whatever her reasons, the Archbishop has placed great faith in you. Do not betray that trust. <laughs> Professor, I know where the enemy is, where Solon is. They're in a place called the Sealed Forest, close to the monastery. The Archbishop is gathering the knights to begin a search. She's doing so in secret, behind our backs. She must be afraid that a thirst for revenge will compel you to seek them out. Now that you know, will you give us the order? No. I will not allow it. This discovery comes just when the knights are at their busiest. It is all too likely that our foes revealed themselves to lure you out there. They are the ones who took Geralt from you. I know how you must despise them, but I must ask you to rein in your personal feelings for now. Please, Professor, do not act carelessly. I ask that you leave this to us. Losing you so soon after losing Gerald would be unbearable. Lady Rhea, our professor is not acting out of revenge. Sending us out there is the most strategic move we can make. You can't deny it. Most of the knights are still far away. Not only does our professor wield a hero's relic, but there is no one here who is more powerful. Sedith and the few remaining knights can't leave the monastery unattended. We have fought under our teacher's command countless times. We are the most effective army here, and we are already prepared for battle. We have no idea what the enemy is plotting. Professor, do you agree with this strat? Understood. I will give you the order. Destroy the enemy that is hiding in the sealed forest. You have the protection of the goddess on your side. Whatever happens, you shall overcome. Let's go, my teacher. Whatever happens, do not lose your conviction out there.
can't believe it. How can I show my face to Lady Edelgard after this? That's what you get, Hubert. If you rested like me, you wouldn't collapse from exhaustion. As much as it pains me to say it, you're right. But to be looked after by you, of all people, that might be the worst part. I don't know how to feel, to be honest. So for now, let's pretend I thanked you. Oh, come now. Even I wouldn't abandon someone who collapsed. You would have in a heartbeat if anyone else had been around. Ah, yes. Quite accurate, Hubert. Why would I ever bother to be a decent person if there were anyone else I could foist the duty upon? If your situation turned bad, it would have been an absolute hassle. I could never just leave you. If that were the sort of man you truly were, we could never be friends. <laughs> but if we weren't friends, I probably would have just left you. Shame you're so reluctant to do any real work. You're actually pretty sure I was comfortable. Checked carefully for injuries. If only you'd apply that knowledge of yours so proactively and thoroughly, you'd be a tremendous asset. There you go again. I see no problem with staying just the way I am. Think of it this way. In an anthill, 20% of the ants are asleep at any given time. And it's not because they're lazy. Far from it. When the working ants become tired, they go to sleep and the others wake up. That's me. I'm the ant who rests so I can work later when other people are... Maybe that's true. But even if it is, it's still just a fancy way to say you let others consider me un... I'll consider you a bother and let you and Edelgard work far too hard. I mean it. Take a break if you both collapsed. I think it'd be too much effort for me to bother with. Get some rest, Hubert. Um, Hubert? Yes? I just, um, I wanted to thank you for the other day. You know, when I fainted. Thank you for carrying me back to my room. That was nothing. It saved me effort in the long run. Leaving you there would have just caused even more trouble. I guess that's true. Well, thanks. There, I said it. Is this why you've been circling me like a vault? Uh, vault? Yet you would have fled if I'd approached. It seems you will avoid me at almost... Um... You don't need to say it. I know. I'm told so often. Uh, please don't laugh like... Apologies. I will be mindful not to laugh in your... Uh, the grin of death. You think so? Oh, no. Now you're ink. Hardly. I'm... No, you're not. It's a trick. You're lulling me into a false sense of security. I can't stand it. <laughs> Why am I having so much trouble fighting these tall guys? They're not even stronger than me. You've got to help me come up with a strategy, Linhart. Is that not a waste of time? Even if I handed you a perfect strategy, something I've done in the past, you'd never follow it through. That's because your plans are always so complicated. But come on, I need your help. All right, I will share with you my tactical genius. I call this my secret plan. You already have a plan? Oh, you really are ready for anything. So, what? Land the first hit. Then keep hitting them hard and fast as you can until they stop hitting you. So you're basically telling me to just... Dodge their attacks, keep up the assault, then go for the knees. Done. The secret is the knees? Being tall means short people are closer to your knees. Exploit the enemy's weakness, Caspar. Makes sense. That doesn't sound like my style, though. I don't really want to... Then go ahead and continue losing. Or you can listen to the... There's more? Your defense is careless. The last bit of my secret is that you need to train in that area. I won't argue with training. No, I don't think we should... Come on! You've even got that height advantage you're always going on about. You're the perfect quit stalling. <sighs> Fine. I'll try. All right, Lenhart. Come at me again! Uh, Water. I need... Huh? Hmm. <laughs> he got away. <laughs> Now then, where is that book on dance? Hello, Flane. I'm curious if you could confirm some suspicions I have. Hello, Linhart. What is it? I've recently been lost in study on the topic of St. Sethleen. 
You're familiar with- I know a little of her, as do many. But what does this have to do with me? Interesting that you would ask that. Your question betrays your understanding of my inquiry. I am quite certain that it does not, as a matter of fact. I have interviewed several members of the Academy and the Monastery. All agree that you have trouble focusing on detail-oriented work. As I mentioned, I have been carefully researching St. Sethleen's history, and I found several intriguing anecdotes concerning... Granted, it is not stated explicitly in the text, but it is easy enough to read between the lines and get to the underlying truth. The authors of several tomes, all written within 50 years of St. Sethleen's passing, imply she found it difficult to maintain focus on detail-oriented tasks. Then, just this morning, as I was studying statues of St. Sethleen, I came to realize how similar her visage is to your own. I do not appreciate your disrespectful approach to this topic. No disrespect intended, I assure you. St. Sethleen is a major saint. I only mean to say that looking like her is an honor. I actually meant that you are being disrespectful to St. Sethleen. There was one other. If you must. You are quite skilled in white magic, yes? My understanding is that you have a very high affinity for the art. Yes, I do. I am confident in my abilities. I am glad of my abilities, for it is a way in which I am able to help others. Indeed. Once more, an echo of St. Sethleen. I am so curious as to why such similarities exist. Her crest? Perhaps hereditary traits, then? Or is it possible I am allowing myself to see patterns where there are not? I am very busy searching for a book. I will be going now. Bernadetta. <laughs> Lady Edelgard, what can I- I appreciate all the effort you're making to overcome your fear of me. Your dedication is commendable. However- I'm just getting in your way, aren't you? Know it, Bernie. You're just an intruder. Nobody wants you around- Bernadetta. Yes? The problem you keep running into is that you don't listen to what people are really saying. That's why your efforts are in vain. You need to listen instead of jumping to your own conclusion. Are you listening to- Yes! Then why aren't you responding? Um, I wanted to listen until you were finished. I was. Then may I please scream now? By all means. But please try to make it a fairly quiet. Just a tiny one. <sighs> um, wait. What was I upset about again? That's weird. I forgot why I was about to scream, and now I don't even need to. You're trying your best. I know that. But, but what? What did I do this time? I'm so sorry. Wait, you didn't let me finish. I was only going to see. Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I stay Bernadetta? Is this a trouble you are? Ha I heard that the duty to hunt is yours to. The duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my- Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it. That is how prey- You must think of the beasts as food. So it- But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. They do not scream. Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. You must do what you must do to be a task. Yes, feel it. There, in the grass. Give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a... Uh, Right. You are now a hunter. I am? You have understanding. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down I have belief in you. Aw, thanks, but make way for a hunt! Have luck, Bernie. <laughs> no! Stay back! I'm sorry, why are you the one chasing me? <laughs> You're in high spirits today, Dorothy. Yes. I have met someone quite charming recently. 
I'm hoping we can spend more- Well, I wish you the best of luck. I wish I had some advice to- Eh, don't worry too much about it, Ape. I guess romance isn't really something you're interested in, and- I'm not completely disinterested. Oh, yeah? Is there someone you have your eye- Hmm. To be honest, there's nothing resembling romance in my- It's not that I'm disinterested. I'm simply too busy with other endeavors. I have no time- That's not surprising. You're not just any old noble. Anyone who has feelings for you. True. And I can't ignore the possibility that I may have to marry. I doubt I'll ever have the opportunity for- That's no way to talk. You meet the right person. Could be someone you've just met, or someone you've known your whole- There's no telling how life will go. You and I. Now that is- If such an exciting future is in store- Oh yeah? <laughs> That's awfully sweet of you, Aidy. Ah, oh, it seems to be coming from the training area. You have met your match, Rust. Good day to you, Ferdinand. You smell amazing. Ah, Flane, hello. Uh -huh. Yes, that is the smell, all right. I am simply doing some armor making. A little oil keeps the rust at bay, ensuring that the armor moves smoothly. I see. I thought maybe you were doing some cooking. You smell a bit like food. <laughs> but I suppose that is the oil tricking my nose. <laughs> I would not cook in the training area. Are you hungry by chance? Not really, no. But is that oil not also used for, for things like frying meat or drizzling over a nice crisp salad? Were I to coat my armor in oil that smells of food? I would be distracted by hunger and- I doubt that amidst actual fighting, the smell would still make you hot when you are in the thick of it. You devote all your focus and energy to- I suppose you're right. And actually, all of this talk of delicious oil- <laughs> In that case, I will accompany- I must apologize, Ferdinand, but I cannot wait even a moment for you. I am fam- I shall be in the dining hall, getting my fill of fried goodies. Well, that was quick. Hmm. I will admit- Hey, Dorothea. Something's been bothering me. I kind of feel like you act more casually around me than you do with other people. Casually? I don't know what you mean. I just feel like you're always asking me to do things that might make other people uncomfortable. Like when you asked me to clean your room. You're not very flirty toward me like you are with the other guys. You seem weirdly... Hmm. You pay more attention than I would have thought. Hey. Are you interested in me? What? Uh, no. I, um, it just seemed weird, and I was curious. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's true that I do find you quite a convenient little helper. It's like you're... how to put it? You're like a little brother to me. Ugh. Really? That's not exactly a compliment. No, but it's true. And now that I've thought about it, I like the whole... Why don't you try calling me... B no, no, that's not gonna happen. Why not? I'm embarrassed just thinking about... Oh, come on. It's just a goof. You can manage it at least once, can't you? <laughs> Please. That's... an entire... <sighs> Excess. <laughs> well done, Caspar. You're... I'm not cute, and I'm not little. How would you feel if I made you call me Big Bro? Oh? Well, is something wrong, Big Bro? Oh! Thank <laughs> you.